And good evening, saints. Good to be with you again on another Wednesday night. Pastor Marvin Tigner, the Fellowship Baptist Church, Kansas City, Missouri. And we're in the midst of celebrating our 69th church anniversary. And so we are excited about that. Uh, it's the first Wednesday in October, and I want to wish all of our birthday celebrities for this month a happy birthday. I know uh, Deacon Samuels had a birthday already, and so, uh, and I also want to thank everyone who recognized my birthday with cards, calls, uh, text messages, Facebook stuff. So thank you for recognizing my birthday as well. Um, and um, I do also want to thank those persons who um, participate in our Wisdom Speaks segment. Uh, hopefully we'll have some more of those uh, coming throughout the rest of the calendar year. So praise God for all of that. Uh, this coming Sunday, this Sunday, uh, we will be celebrating our sixth pastoral anniversary. Uh, pastor, wife, and family, our sixth pastoral anniversary. Uh, obviously, uh, much lower key, uh, us not gathering, but uh, we are excited. We thank God for six wonderful years, and we thank Him for the work that uh, we're attempting to continue to do. We thank you for those who have been supportive of this ministry, whether you are members or not, and uh, we just think it's a blessing to be in uh, God's work, even in these times. So, also this Sunday, Sunday evening, uh, the Blue River Association, the Blue River uh, Baptist Association will be having their semi-annual meeting at uh, 4 p.m. at the Fellowship Church in Greenwood on 150 Highway and yours truly uh, will be installed as moderator of the Blue River Association. So those who can, uh, those who will, uh, I'm would appreciate seeing you there and I believe we're going to be able to see it uh, virtually as well I'll be there in person to receive the gavel but uh, I think we can do it online as well and we'll try to make sure that that information is posted on our website and that our church clerk has it as well um, big thank you to uh, Reverend and Sister Ely for doing our Sunday school if you have not joined that uh, they're doing an excellent job on Sunday morning at 9, and so uh, we please avail yourself to that opportunity if you have not already. It is coming to you on the Zoom platform, so it is uh, interactive as well. Um, with regards to our healing and restoration list, I want us to be in prayer for Brother Caldwell's family. Uh, Sister Caldwell needs our prayers. Uh, Brother Caldwell passed this past weekend and uh, his funeral is going to be this Friday in Higginsville uh, and so um, sister uh, many our church clerk should have all of the information for that and please uh, send cards if you can to sister Caldwell we know she is homebound also be in prayer continued prayer for our brother Marvin Richardson and family he lost his close aunt who was uh, like a mother to him uh, in Denver and uh, I believe they're traveling this weekend to Denver for that service. Uh, be in prayer for Brother Courtney and Brother Keaton Mays who lost their father and we assisted in funeralizing him on this past Friday so continue to be in prayer for them. Uh, all of those those three families are suffering in bereavement. Um, Continue to lift up Sister Anita Pearson's granddaughter, Angela, who had a hospital stay, uh, was in ICU, but she has just gone home and is recovering at home. So uh, be in prayer for her. Be in prayer for Sister Lewis and Sister Watts, Sister Nathaline Washington, uh, Sister Rolf, uh, Sister Kim and Michaela McIntosh, and Sister Virginia Johnson. Amen. Amen. I do want to, uh, for us to pray this evening uh, 
for our healing and restoration list and for all of us uh, in general. And I want to read from the 67th number of Psalm to get us uh, started this evening. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth thy saving help among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all of the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for preserving us and keeping us and allowing us another opportunity to come before your throne of grace in prayer. And Father, we come as a church family asking that you would continue to lift up our bereaved families, continue to touch and heal bodies of the names that have been called. And Lord, we pray your anointing spirit on everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, we thank you that you've been so gracious, so merciful, and so kind. And Lord, we don't take this opportunity, but when we do come, we do want to say thank you. Thank you for blessing us to see even another day. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for allowing us to exalt your holy and righteous name. Father God, we just pray blessings upon each ministry in our church. We pray blessings upon our church in its entirety. And Father God, bless pastor and people that we might continue to unify, that we might continue to grow closer one with another. And Father God, as this health crisis continues to devastate not only our city and our uh, geographical area, but in the entire world, Father, we pray your, your healing touch your blessings and Father God just move so that we might be able to navigate these rough waters. And Father God, help us when we navigate these waters to come through on the other side. And Father, we thank you for peace that passes all understanding. Bless us, keep us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We have been talking from the subject, or we've been talking about comforting God's people. And over the last several weeks during the month of September, we talked about loving one another and stop beating yourself up and talked even from the topic of caring family. And so we've spent some time trying to make sure that we ensure that we understand and know that God cares about us. He sees what's going on in our lives and he wants to protect us as well. And so I want us to know of God's comfort and his care in these Wednesday evening settings. Um, I did forget to mention there's some extremely exciting good news, some praise report uh, that I want to pass on. Uh, Brother Courtney Mays is in his final semester at uh, Morehouse College. So he'll be graduating uh, here in several weeks, and he has already accepted a job offer with Amazon and will be headed to uh, Seattle in February, uh, as we say in the hood, making that paper. And so uh, wish him a congratulatory uh, chat or whatever you have to do, but that's good news for us. I uh, also failed to mention that the Missouri Baptist Convention is going to begin meeting October 12th 
uh, virtually uh, and so I want to make sure you know that they are meeting the 12th, 13th, and the 14th. Uh, and all of that information is on the New Era District uh, Baptist Church website on how to uh, access those meetings virtually, all of those kinds of things. Uh, so I failed to mention those two pieces of news, and I want to make sure we get those. This evening, I'd like to begin in this new month talking about the subject of prayer when we're talking about God comforting us I want us to be able to know that not only does God comfort us but we can communicate with God as well one of the things that I've heard a lot of in these last seven months is uh, with regard to isolation and a need for spiritual invigorment uh, uh, a need for healing and folks that are feeling uh, isolated in a way and because we can't um, or we're not getting that spiritual nourishment just from our energy in the same building I want you to know that God can take care of you wherever you are and so as you try to make sure that you understand that God's comfort and care is there I want you to know that you can also communicate conversate with God himself. Amen? Amen. And so uh, I said it this past Sunday, uh, very early on in my sermon, I said this is now a time for us to understand Psalm 4610. We need to be still and know that he is God. We need to be still and know that he is God. And one, one of the things that we must know is that God is God. He created us. Genesis chapter 2. He created us. We did not create ourselves. And so uh, he made us. He created us. And we are in his image. And so he gave us an opportunity to have fellowship with him. And one of those opportunities that's been given to us is in the form of prayer. Amen. Amen. And so I want you to know when we begin to talk about prayer, prayer begins with God. Prayer begins with God. Okay. It's not something that we have initiated because we're not the creator. We are the creation. Okay. So it's an opportunity for us to converse with God that God has already given us. And so I want us to, uh, Write this down. Let's go to Psalm 73, the 73rd number of Psalm, verse 28. The very last verse reads thusly, it says, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all thy works. Prayer is an opportunity for us to draw closer to God. We know God based on Romans chapter 1. We can know God just in our daily walk. Even people who are not saved know that there is a God. So we can know God just by seeing the orderly nature of his creation. And so when we know God and we know that God created us in his image, we also have an opportunity to draw closer to God because he has created us. And Psalm 73 tells us we can draw nearer to him. And so in these times, in these crisis times, we must draw closer to God in our personal relationship in our personal relationship with him and so uh, unless we can acknowledge that there is a God then prayer becomes meaningless if there's no God so prayer begins with God because all things began with God and we are the creation and so if everything began with God our communication is back to him in fact um, not just him but let's go to 1st Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 8 
1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 6. First Corinthians 8, 6 reads thusly, it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. Okay? Paul's talking to the church at Corinth, talking about um, uh, food that is uh, sacrificed to idols, and he goes on to say, they're doing some other things, but for us, okay? That verse 8 is really talking about but for saved individuals, but for Christians, but for those who are called out. But for us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, the creator of all things, the sustainer of all things, and we are in him. We are in him and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we are by him. And so our communication, our prayer life, our preservation, all of that uh, conversation, all of that has to do with the fact that we are in God. I said earlier that unless God exists, unless there is a God, we cannot have prayer. It would be meaningless. What I'm trying to say here is we understand that there is a God. And so we've gathered and tried to get closer to him. It's a, it's a, opportunity for us to draw nearer to him amen amen so uh god the father jesus christ the son and we're in there amen and we are in there and so and so what is prayer prayer is our opportunity to have conversation and or a communication with god and there are a lot of people that pray. God hears prayers of his children, but there are others that pray as well. You'll hear people who say they don't believe in God, pray to God in crisis moments. And so our prayer is an opportunity for us to communicate with God and for God to communicate with us as well. When we pray in our devotional time, our standard set aside continuous prayer, we want to make sure that when we pray, we also have our Bibles with us because God will speak to us in that still small voice but he'll also speak to us through his word and so we have to learn how to go into our prayer closet uh, there was a very popular movie that was just recently released uh, War Room and we've shown that at the church where we ought to have some place set aside for not only praying but for communicating with God and it ought to be designated just for that. Amen. Amen. And so praying is an opportunity for us to draw nearer to God, to converse with him, and to uh, allow him to converse with us. In fact, our goal in praying ought to be to cultivate a meaningful relationship with God. We don't want to just know of him. We want to know him. There's a big difference between knowing of him and knowing him. And so uh, of all our relationships, of all our relationships uh, on earth, we don't want our relationship with God to take second place. Exodus chapter 20 uh, where the Ten Commandments are found. Uh, and I believe the first commandment says, um, I am your God, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. 
we do not want to put God in second place. So our relationship and our prayer life needs to be cultivated so that we have a uh, fantastic relationship with God the Father. That when we do pray, when we have a good relationship, we can have expectation of answered prayer. An expectation that God's going to answer our prayer. And so again, we say that prayer is an opportunity for us to converse with God. Uh, let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter one, verse 15. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. This is an example of somebody who is in deep prayer. And they have an expectation from God. And they're pouring out their soul to God. Prayer could be defined as us pouring out our soul to God. There is nothing that's hidden from God. And so when we pray, we need to pray as if God knows all of those things that you're trying to uh, keep secret from him. He already knows your bad side. He already knows uh, those things that you're warring against in yourself. And here, Hannah is praying because she has not been able to have a child. She's been barren. And in her prayer, she is pouring out to God. And the people that see her praying, are concerned that she's a drunk woman. She says, I've neither had drink or anything. I'm just pouring out my soul to God. When we pray, it's an opportunity to converse with God. It's an opportunity just for us to pour out our soul before God. And so then the question becomes, so why should I pray? Why should I pray? Well, if God created us, and God has given us an opportunity to be in relationship with him, we ought to want to take that opportunity to be in a positive relationship with God. But also, it shows our dependence on God. Go back to Genesis, first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 25. And from verse 19 all the way down through the end of the chapter, we are going to see a um, genealogy, Isaac, all the way down through Jacob. And in this genealogy, we're also going to see in the prayers our dependence on God. Look at verse 23 with me, if you will. And the Lord said unto her, let me start at 19. Let me start at 19. I don't, for, and these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to be his wife, uh, the Syrian, and the sister of Laban, 
the Syrian, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. You hear that? He prayed to God because his wife was barren, and the Lord uh, was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Notice everybody praying. Um, Isaac his wife Rebecca and the Lord said in verse 23 God answers prayer they were depending upon God in every situation and the Lord said her to her two nations are in thy womb and the and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels and the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger okay it shows our dependence on God that's why we pray and it continues on in the same story, in that same vein, you're going to see continuously folk depending upon God. We pray because we need to show God that we're depending upon him. We do not want to give the appearance that we are independent of God. To be independent of God is to say that we don't need God. We can make our own sunshine. We can make our own rain. We can fix all of our own ills. I, as for me and my house, we're not dependent, independent of God. We are truly dependent upon God. And so we take the opportunity to pray, not only together, but individually as well. And so we pray to show our dependence on God. Amen. And it also in our prayer, the reason we pray is it helps us to define our relationship with God. Let's go to Judges 16. Judges 16. Verse 28. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson was praying because he knew God, but yet he had strayed from God and he needed to redefine his relationship with God and restore his relationship with God. So often many, so often we often, so often we all pray that kind of a prayer where we need restoration with God. Lord, you know I messed up, but if this one time if you'll fix it this one time, you don't ever have to worry about me doing that again. If you'll help me, Lord, I will serve you to the day I die. Lord, if you help me, I'm going to start tithing. Lord, if you help me, I'm going to... And so we understand that prayer. We pray it because we already know God, not just of him, but we know God. But we've messed up along the way and we're trying to restore our relationship with God. And so Samson goes on to ask God for that favor and God grants it and he pushes the pillows down and he avenges himself with the Philistines trying to make right with God because he did something that God told him not to do. Amen. Amen. So one of the reasons we pray is to restore our relationship with God the Father. Amen. Amen. And so if we know what prayer is and we know why we should pray, I guess the next question is, how should I pray? Let's go to uh, New Testament book of Matthew. Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, 
Christ is teaching in the Sermon on the Mount and he's telling his disciples and all those who are gathered what they should and should not do. But when we get to Matthew chapter 6, he starts telling them uh, when you begin to give, don't give so everybody can see you in public and everybody knows you're trying to give and you're trying to make a big showing of, of your giving. And, and uh, let your alms be done in secret. So what you do in secret, your father can reward you openly. And then when we get to verse 5, he begins to talk about prayer. And he says, and when you pray, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And so he's saying, don't do that, but do this. So here in verse 6 is where I want you to uh, pay attention. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Pray with sincerity. Pray with sincerity. Because when you go into the closet and you're by yourself, you don't have to impress anybody with your words. If you don't have any $12 words, if you don't have any college dictionary words, God knows. But don't do like the hypocrites and try to pray loudly and with repetition in public so that everybody can see them praying so to be seen rather than praying to God. Remember we said we pray so we can have conversation and relationship with God. And so it's more important that we make sure we get it right with God than if we get it right with men. Amen. And, and it goes on to talk about vain repetition as well. Repeating the same words over or using uh, uh, incantations as if God is going to be a magic genie and if I say the right words he's going to do exactly what I say. God is not obligated because we said a particular set of words in a particular order. God is not obligated. God is the creator. We are the creation. Amen. Amen. And so we never can make God do something. Amen. And so we pray so that God will hear us and respond to us because of his loving kindness. Amen. Amen. I don't want to keep you too long this evening. We'll pick up this subject. We'll pick up this. And I want you to be thinking about your prayer life. I want you to be activating your prayer life. And I want to be you to be cultivating your relationship with God. It's extremely important for every Christian, for every believer to not only know God, but to know him well and to know him for yourself. So until I come back to you again, God bless you. God keep you. Know that God loves you and so do I.